What's up guys, welcome back to another World of Tanks PlayStation 4 replay with me, Ben. So it's another road to tier 10 and we are out in the, the Panzer 38 NA again and I wasn't going to do any more replays in this one. I thought we were kind of um, we were kind of done with it. We were pretty close to unlocking the next one, the um, was it the Panzer 4 or something. But um, I had a few games left to play. I jumped on last night to... Um, grab some of those and actually you ended up getting two really nice games so I thought I'd, um, I thought I'd bring you the replays but this will be the final ones from the 38 NA so enjoy it while you can this is the tier 4 German light tank on the line towards the E100 quite a long way from the E100 but working on it we're on Erlenberg we've got pretty nice matchmaking we have charged over to the sort of AB side and just gonna sit myself in a boot here and just kind of wait to see want to see what they're sending this way like we said before it's very unpredictable low tier games so um so I'm not gonna didn't want to charge forward there could be loads of people there I just wanted to kind of hang in this area maybe spot people up get some easy shots on anyone that charges across the bridge like a nutter and just bide my time and see um see how the battle develops we go with this DW2. Not going to be the easiest one for me to shoot and can't aim in enough anyway. It's one of the things, it's been quite a nice little tank this for a low tier tank. I've kind of got used to it now. Um, it's not a bad little gun, it's quite maneuverable. Um, the, moment, the biggest downside for me really has been the, the aim time is pretty bad. So um, you just sit there aiming in and by the time you're aimed in someone suddenly fires their derp gun and one shots the guy you wanted to shoot. So that can be a little bit frustrating. Um, or if you end up in a tier 7 match like I did on the live commentary the other day, um, you're pretty screwed. You can't really do much in a tier 7 match in this thing. But um, as you uh, as you saw if you watched that replay. But I've realised there doesn't seem to be much going on over here. That guy in front of me had moved forward so much that he would have got spotted by anyone camping here. Um, so I just thought I'd charge in. It looked like their team were getting smashed. We wanted to get some damage, so let's go. Um, I also saw they had 3 artillery, which would have been a pretty vulnerable target. So we're charging in. Um, somehow there's a light tank that's peeled off from the town right behind us. I just noticed now as he starts shooting me. But um, for the moment my focus is just do as much damage as possible. So I'm just trying to uh, finish that guy off while I dodge, um, try and dodge some shots off this Stuart. Try and dodge the ram, but he doesn't, does less damage than I thought he would. I thought the Stuart would do more though. Then we can get focusing on this guy. Thankfully, um, he seems to have got tired of shooting me and decides to shoot my teammate instead, um, which does help me out quite nicely. And there he goes, that's two kills. One of them is the RT. A little bit unlucky there. And this guy just gets blapped by the RT before I can, um, before I can save him. So this DW2, I thought he was facing me for a little while, but I think he's actually facing the other way. But um, there was someone up there shooting down at me, but which I can only assume was him, but I, uh, I think he just gave up. But there we go, we've got three kills um, in very rapid succession. I think it's just quite nice. It's not like crazy gameplay or anything. It's just quite a nice example of, um, I don't know, finding a, a decent sort of semi-forward position to, uh, to sit in, and keep an eye on what's going on the battlefield. And when you think it looked like there wasn't really going to be too much over there. It looked like their RT was going to be exposed. It seemed like the perfect time to, to dive in there and get yourself some nice damage, get yourself some nice XP, and get yourself ground up to the next tier tank as soon as possible. A bit unlucky there. And that's the Pascucci's medal, my first Pascucci's medal on um, on PlayStation 4. I didn't realise the time until the end of the battle. I, I kind of forgot about that medal, but um, yeah, that's cool. It's not a crazy one, but um, it's another nice one to have. I've got plenty of those on on, uh, on PC. I haven't got any of those on PC. got plenty of those on Xbox. First one on PlayStation. Um, you might also notice I actually finally remembered to put some premium shells on this tank, which I've been moaning about every time I've done a video before and got a, um, a higher tier battle or was firing at heavy tanks that it's pretty hard to pen them with this thing. So, um, so I finally threw a few cramp shells on there. Which makes life a bit easier, especially if you end up in some sort of tier 7 game like I did the other day. But there you go, there's Pascucci's medal, mastery 95%, and cool headed for, um, I think that's for bouncing a, a bunch of shots. Something like that. I think we'll have a look. There we go. Survive 10 ricocheted or non pens in a row, which 
It must have been from that light tank, I guess, as he was uh, vainly trying to hit me. But um, yeah, I was a little bit surprised by that one. But yeah, that was alright. Nice one. Um, 2,500 XP with a couple of ops. When you've only got to get 15k to get the nice tank, the next tank. That is a very significant um, chunk of XP. So let's jump onto the next battle and we'll see how we get on. So here we go, round number two. We are on Ruinberg. And I think this is the first time I've actually played Ruinberg non war. I'm not sure if. Is this on, is this on Xbox now? I think it's on Xbox now. I'm not really sure. Um, but it's certainly, it's certainly the first time I've played on Ruinberg not on the war variant. I um, don't know if that's just a PS4 thing or not. I haven't played on um, the Xbox too much in the last couple of weeks, so so who knows. But um, but yeah, Ruinberg's quite, it's kind of a cool map. I, I quite like going around this way on Ruinberg, especially when I'm in a, a quick tank. Because you can play around these buildings and there's quite a lot of nice cover you can pop out of. And you can get... A lot of people leave themselves quite exposed to seeing across near the town. They forget about some of the, um, the lines of sight that are around. So yeah, we'll see how we go. And we've got a pretty even spread of our team there, so that looks fairly promising. I'm just sort of pausing there a sec to... Uh, just thinking about my retreating options there. Cause I'm, if I get too far up here, it's a bit worried I'll have the long way to reverse if I get caught out. But there are these little nooks here that I can pull into, so um, so that's my backup option. Always look for your uh, for your escape route. It can really save you a lot of trouble when you get in a sticky situation. And now I'm realising getting pretty far forward, and there we go. We've finally seen someone, so we'll, um, we'll focus on this guy. Only a little tier 3, so it shouldn't be too much. Fluff that shot there, very silly. Then try to rely on the auto aim. Again, pretty silly. And we finally get to do, start doing things properly. And finish them off. Still a little bit rusty with the um, with the PlayStation controller. I'm getting used to it now, but I've probably only played a, a couple of dozen games on the um, on the PlayStation 4, and I have, it's the first time I've used the PlayStation 4. First time I've used PlayStation controller since I owned a... Uh, a PS2, so um, so I'm getting used to it. I've been using the Xbox controller for a long time. It's not too bad. I think I prefer the Xbox controller, but then I have been using that for years and years, so it's um, it's easy to say. And there we go. We've taken out another tank, or we at least helped take out another tank. But um, so we actually ended up. The reason I uh, when it got to this stage in the battle, in my head, I was thinking, oh, this might be two Pascucci's medal in a, medals in a row here, because it. Kind of the same thing has happened in that we've we've cracked through one or two tanks on the flank and it looks like there's kind of no one else over here so screw it i'm gonna get stuck in we'll see what happens people tend to a lot of people really like going to the town on this to scrap especially heavy tanks which they've got quite a few of um and it can leave leave your artillery artillery pretty exposed if um if you only have one or two tanks coming over this way and then they get taken out So now we are artillery hunting once again, and sort of like YOLO artillery hunting just for the sake of doing it isn't always the best option, but in this sort of situation it's definitely the best thing that we could have done from our flank. Um, I don't think there would have been a much benefit to us pushing across the middle to try and get in the town and engage those heavies. I think we could contribute a lot more by um, by putting the willies up the artillery and um, taking it out of the game, stopping it shooting our teammates, getting some nice damage ourselves. And um, <laughs> and really uh, sort of panicking the enemy team as they realise that they are significantly outnumbered and outmaneuvered. So I just shuffle out the way there in case this guy was going to take a shot at me. He did look like he was looking this way, but then we can start shooting again. There we go. Sadly, no double Pascucci's medal, unfortunately, but we did put um, put some nice damage on those arty, and we can move in and start um, seeing who else we can get some some flanking shots on. KV1, big armored target there. That is going to be difficult to penetrate without prem shells, even from behind for this tank, I believe. So I'm not going to chance it. I'm just going to stick with it. get a little bit lucky with the tracking shot there. A little bit of a sticky situation here because I knew as soon as I started firing him he was likely to turn around and start shooting me. There wasn't really much many options for dodging him so I nipped in here and it actually um, didn't seem like too bad an option. And this works quite well a lot of the time. People turn around and try and shoot you um, and they expect you to just kind of drive straight out and let them shoot you back but if you just kind of hide for a while your teammates can um, 
can just shoot the back of their turret for a while, which is what happens here. And then we manage to just time some shots nicely into his back of his engine. And we take him out. Or we help him get taken out. So quite pleased with that. I'm very pleased there was a little nook there for me to drive in, otherwise I probably would have been screwed or I've had to try and circle him, which I think might have been difficult given the um I don't know, given the maneuverability of this tank and the width of that street. And there we go, one tank left. We'll just chase him down, see what we can do. And we managed to get one very lucky little damaging shot in one at the end there as well. Three kills, 19 damaging shots. So there we go, after going for the live commentary the other week and getting some pretty hard matchmaking and um, and nothing too crazy, I played these two games in a row last night and had two very nice games. We got another mastery, 99%. I think I got one of those a little while ago in this tank. We got a high caliber, which is lovely to have, especially in lower tiers and not in a tank destroyer. It's not don't often get high calibers in light tanks, especially outside of um, the lower tiers, I suppose. But there you go, yeah, 1200 damage in a tier 4 game, pretty pleased with that. Top Dog, 1202 XP. Pretty good game by the T14, really. And yeah, yeah, very pleased with that. So that's 2,500 XP with some ops, which brings us very, very close to our next tank, which we will now have a look at. We also, if you're watching this on Saturday, day it goes live. Hello, happy Saturday. Hope you're enjoying your weekend. Um, we're going to be live streaming some World of Tanks today about 5 p.m. GMT, so um, check that out. There you go. This is how close we are. We are 403 XP away. I don't want to use that for XP. I'm just going to, um, I'll just get that later. Rupert Assman is very, very close to unlocking his next tank. But yeah, I'm going to put a couple of games in. Well, hopefully one game. Unlock that next tank. And then um, next video, you'll see some... Um, some replays from the next tier up. I might even throw some in the middle um, in the T3488, just grinding the crew up a little bit to get it to 100%. Because I'll move, I'll move the ass man over to the new tank, and then he'll be down to what 75% mastery or whatever they go to. So I'll need to um, get that back up to 100. So I'll be tempted to do some T3488. I think you guys would probably like to um, see some gameplay in that tank anyway. So um, so look forward to that. Yeah, but if you, um, if you do want to watch a stream today around 5 p.m. GMT for two or three hours, uh, twitch.tv slash thebeardguys. We're going to be playing on our Xbox today. Uh, me and Lammy, we're going to do a bunch of public training rooms, uh, battles with everyone. So come along, get involved, um, have a chat, play some games with us. It'll be fun. All right, nice one. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time. Mm -hmm.